Hi guys, it's me again, and I am starting a new book series. Well, it's not really a series. It is called On Fire, a Teen Wolf Novel. And in this video, I'm going to be reading chapters 1 and 2 to you. Remember to subscribe to my channel. And let's get started. Okay, so <clears throat> there's no prologue. So, let's start on chapter one. It was the night of the parent-teacher conference at Beacon Hill High, and everyone in the school parking lot was panicking. A wild animal was racing up and down the rows of parked cars. Scott McCall could hear it growling when he forced his werewolf's vision. He could see flashes of it as it slunk along, stalking warm prey. People ran, leaped into their cars, didn't look where they were going. Someone backed into, into Sheriff Selinsky and he fell down hard enough to make it impossible for him to get to his ankle holster. Then Allison's father shot twice and it was over. Scott kept Addison in his sights as they joined the circle, forming silent witnesses to the execution. On the ground lay a mountain lion, the mountain lion that everyone has been blaming for all the brutal death in Beacon Hill, a small California town. But Scott knew it had nothing to do. It had done nothing to deserve this. It hadn't even wandered on the school grounds of its own accord. It's been lured. And the death would not end. Somewhere out there, the real culprit was watching, gloating. The Alpha, the world that had bitten Scott and cursed, cursed him, was still at large, still free to kill. Addison looked up at Scott, her bring brown, big brown eyes wide, lips pressed together. Her long brown hair hung over the shoulders of her black leather jacket as she wrapped her arms around herself. Then she gave another pitying look at the mountain lion. The folds of her green and blue scarf brushed against her chin. No one was cheering. The death of the animal least of all her. Scott smelled her dismay, heard her pounding heart. He would have done anything to keep her safe tonight. He was relieved beyond telling that he hadn't shifted in all the stress. She was still safe from his terrible secret. Narrowing his eyes as Scott Scott, Allison's father, put a hand on her shoulder. Chris Argent was the leader of the World Hunters, and he had shot Scott through the arm with a crossbow bolt. Crossbow bolt. The very first night Scott had shifted, Derek had rescued Scott and told him about the Hunters. It had been a terrible shock when Scott discovered that Mr. Argent was also Allison's father. So far, thought. Mr. Argent hadn't realized that Scott was a werewolf he had nearly caught just a few short weeks ago. Now in the parking lot, Addison took one last look at Scott as if she was mem memorizing what he looked like. And then father and daughter walked towards Addison's car. Mr. Argent opened the passenger side door and Addison got in. Obviously, he was going to drive her car home and Addison's mom would take her S their SUV back to their house. As Mr. Argent shut the car door, he turned and gave Scott a last, long, hard, so very pissed off stare. But it was only the look of a protected father angry with a boy for encouraging his daughter to ditch school. We're so busted, Scott thought. It was not the perfect ending he had imagined for the perfect birthday for Addison. It was just that he'd looked so st stricken when all those balloons from Lydia had floated out of her locker this morning. Scott hadn't even known it was her birthday. Turned out she hated celebrating her birthday at school. Scott hadn't known Allison was 17, a year older than the other kids in their class, older than him, and didn't want anyone to know it. It was because of all the moving around, but people in other towns had assumed all kinds of things, that she that was dumb, that she had a baby, he wanted to protect her from a day like that, so to take it off and the day had been magical. Once darkness had fallen, she said she never wanted it to end, and then she told him that she wished she could spend the night with him, with me. Scott thought his, now his own heart beating picked up a thrill, rushing thought, even now, as his mom gave him the evil eye and muttered, in the car, now. He let her march on ahead like a hangman leading him to the gallows. Her back was ramrod straight, her shoulders raised. Everything about her spoke her intense disappointment in him. She was really mad and he didn't blame her. In addition to skipping school, he'd blown off their parent-teacher conference so blissed out to be with Addison that he'd forgotten all about it just as he'd forgotten 
about school too. He was flunking chemistry and he had no grades higher than C. Finding out he's a werewolf and being with Addison took up all his attention. His mom got behind the wheel and he buckled up. Unlike so many other drivers, she was careful starting the car, pulled out of the, the lot. As they merged onto the street, it started to rain. She flipped on the windshield wipers. One of the wipers squealed against the glass. They needed to be replaced. Their car was falling apart like their house. He knew his dad wasn't keeping up with the child support payments, not that his mom had ever mentioned it. Having wealth enhanced <clears throat> senses was a mixed blessing. Sometimes you heard things you'd really rather not. No, at the moment he was listening to his mom's heartbeat. It hadn't slowed. Maybe tomorrow people would be relieved that the mountain lion had been killed. But tonight, the freakiness of having a supposedly man-killing animal slinking up and down the mazes of cars was just too much. I'm just so angry at you, Scott. How could you do this? She says they pulled up in front of their house and the car stopped, rolled to a stop. Then she sighed side turned off the car and gave him a look before he could say anything she got out the rain poured down on his head as he got out too walking quickly he looked around wondering if the outfit had followed them and it was lurking in the shower stalking him creeped out soaked to the skin he dashed into the house making sure the door was locked he braced himself for a lecture but his mom went straight to her bedroom and shut the door he headed for his own room he could hear the rain dripping into the bucket in the bathroom. They had <clears throat> a leaky roof and leaky pipes and the furnace needed replacing. <sighs> he went to his room and tried to video chat Styles, but his best friend wasn't online. Styles' parent-teacher conference had probably gone a lot better than his own. Even if you counted Styles' ADHD, he wasn't blowing off his classes and getting D pluses on assignments. He texted Addison. Ad Addison but she didn't answer. For all he knew, her parents had confiscated her phone and her dad wouldn't be the one to read this message. Better not to push his luck. Scott powered down his computer. He was so amped. He did, did some chin-ups and push-ups. Then he took a shower, brushed his teeth, and climbed into bed. The mountain lion didn't do jack, he thought, and as an argent wants to sleep with me. Smiling faintly, he brushed his pillow under his head and turned over to his side. Rolling onto a pile of leaves, he was shirtless, wearing only boxers. Scott lifted his head and sifted the air. Smoke. Fire. He bolted upright. His bare feet sank into wet leaves as he scrabbled to his feet. He shifted again, trying to figure out where the fire was. There was so much smoke. Animal panic threatened to overtake his human mind, but he kept it together, getting his bearings over out cropped the rock, the indent where he had laid land. He had awakened here before, the very first time he had gone sleepwalking after the bite. <sighs> Ash floated down. The smoke was getting thicker, and Scott heard the crackling of burning wood. He heard a strange whoosh and looked up. The tops of the towering pines had burst in the flames. The rocket towards the moon. A huge, full, <clears throat> bluttered moon. Full moon, he thought. That can't be right. Coughing, Scott jogged. Coughing, Scott jogged toward, forward as tree after tree caught fire as if they were clashing, chasing him, closing in. A growl ripped from his chest and his eyesight shifted. Everything's going as red as the fire. He saw things moving, shifting, animals fleeing, the flames. Heat prickled his naked shoulders and the backs of his legs. Embers floated down and one landed on his chest. As he brushed it away, he lost his footing on the damp leaves and fell hard onto his back. His breath was knocked out of him, and he, his thoughts shot to his inhaler. He didn't have it with him. Smoke was pouring over him like someone throwing a blanket over his face. He couldn't breathe. He was out of air, and he was a severe asthmatic. I'm going to die, he thought. Had he been an asthmatic, he reminded himself. Past tense, before the bite, becoming a werewolf had cured him of lifelong asthma. An enormous, fiery limb broke from the tree above him and plummeted towards like a bomb. He rolled to the side and leaped to his feet. Another branch crashed to his right, sending up sparks. He was driven forward, coughing hard, his eyes watering. Just like the night he had been bitten, a herd of panicked deer <clears throat> burst through the trees, leaping in, in a distress. <clears throat> Sorry, guys. Stampled around him, at him, over him, as before. One knocked him hard and rolled and over and over and down the hill, ball of the flame carried down the incline at him as if someone had torched a dozen tumbleweeds and aimed them at him. Then he hit a tree trunk and passed up, <clears throat> pushed up against it, reaching for a limb. 
He holstered himself up, then raised his leg as the ball of fury brush landed to the trunk mere inches beneath him. Sparks skidded towards him. His stomach muscles ached, but he held the position. Then the treetops exploded into, into flame. The heat singed his hair, singed his hair, crackled in his ears. He dropped down, stamping out of the tinderbox of leaves and twigs under his bare feet. His soles blistered his stung. He began to walk up the hill. Dead again, two red eyes glowed like hellfire itself. Surrounded by darkness, they bored right into him. <clears throat> He could feel the, the pull of that gaze, sense the power of the rage behind it. Come to me, a voice said inside Scott's mind, commanding insist. He didn't want to obey, but he found himself moving forward like a sleepwalker. Come with me, the voice ordered him. A tree crashed right in front of Scott, sending up huge clods of dirt and a shower of burning leaves that barely missed him. Then a wall of fire roared up creating an inferno between him and those eyes, and still Scott climbed towards them, unable to stop himself heading for certain death into hell itself. And then the voice said, Kill with me. No, I won't. Scott yelled, bolting upright. He came to half naked in the forest alone, halfway up the hill. He was wearing his boxers, and there was no fire. The trees stood tall and silent. Drew, <clears throat> dew clustered on their needles, lavender painted in the sky with the color of early morning. In the distance, a bird chirped. Something rustled in the bushes at his feet, a squirrel maybe, or a rabbit. Scratching his chest, he pushed his hair out of his eyes and got to his feet with an antsy feeling of deja vu. Deja vu. He hated the sleepwalking thing, waking up after a black hole to find himself miles from home, deep inside Beacon Hills. Preserve. He had he never had any memory of how he got in here or of what had he done before he come to this. This morning was no different. Did I do it? He wondered. <clears throat> Derek Hale, the other beta wolf in Beacon Hills, promised him that sooner or later he was going to kill someone. Derek was in his mid-twenties and he's been born a werewolf. He lived here when he'd been in high school and his entire family, except for his sister and his uncle, had died in a house fire six years ago. He'd felt he'd left. Now he was back, lured to Beacon Hill to find his sister. The murdered jogger Styles had heard about on his father's police scanner the night before school started. Laura, Laura Hale. Scott was a young werewolf with just one full moon since his bite. Still resistant to call the Alpha as best, as best he could. He already refused to kill the Alpha once, but Derek said it was only a matter of time before the Alpha forced him to hunt and the butcher. Scott only hoped was to help Derek find the Alpha first and kill him. And if Scott dealt the killing blow himself, he would be free of the werewolf curse, or so Derek had told him. But I'm not a killer, he thought. As he began to stagger through the forest, the rustling brush in the fire grew louder. A mo bit more frantic, and Scott cocked his head, listening, sniff sniffing. At his feet, stamped into the damp earth in the print of a single perfect wolf claw. He bent over and laid his hand over it. Not mine, he told himself, but he didn't change into a wolf exactly. Derek didn't either, but Derek's dead sister. Laura Hale had Scott and Styles had seen her in wolf shape when they dug had dug her up beside the burning out shell of the Hale family home a few days after school had started. Then they had removed the wolf bang circling her grave, and she'd been a girl again, a dead girl, half a dead girl. Scott became aware of something watching him, and he tensed. His fingers lengthened the claws, and he quieted, growling. Growling, slowly, he raised his head. His eyesight wolfened and became human again. As 20 feet away, a beautiful silvery wolf stared calmly at him with yellow eyes. The rising sun cast a glow around it, almost as if there was a magical creature, and it stood statue still. Scott... Wonder if he was still dreaming. Then the wolf turned and trotted gracefully away, slipping among the trees. School. <clears throat> Whew. Hey, hey, Scott. Styles called from the parking lot. Beacon Hills High. As Scott changed his bike and took off his helmet before the bite, Scott, three main goals in his life had been playing first line in lacrosse, getting a girlfriend, and buying a car. Accomplishing two out of three was excellent, but he wished he'd put and stayed he went on his list. Funny how it seemed a little more important than getting his own wheels. Styles, I had another weird dream last night, Scott said. As Styles lopped up to him and they walked shoulder to shoulder until the school. Styles had on his bull eye t shirt and it kind of freaked Scott out when he wore it, as if it meant that Styles was a target. 
They both knew that Alpha wanted Scott to kill with him to cement Scott's appearance acceptance that he was a member of the Alpha Pack who better take down than the guy Scott's mom had once referred to as his litter mate. Dream. Did you wake up in the woods again? Siles asked him with rabbit breath. God, no. Scott grim grimaced. At least I don't think so, but there was a fire and fire, which is a recurring theme in the drama that had become your life. Siles said, apping Scott grim and we know that this is because Hi, Scott. As and said, bobbing over with a work special on her face, she was wearing the black and purple top with no sleeves and the bottom heeled boots, and she gave him a kiss on the lips right there in front of the whole school, which was awesome. Catch you later, Bugs, Style said, shoving off. For a second, Scott thought he might pass out from the sheer amazement, amazingness of As's kiss, but her beautiful face was filled with even more concern. <clears throat> the styles as not as beautiful face had been, and he focused hard on what she was saying, thought. His kiss endured to Peter. Missing, she was saying. He was in his house last night and Lydia found an old note in his dresser drawer, she told him, and the, his Porsche was in the garage. Linda, <clears throat> Lydia's, Linda, Lydia. Porsche, his mind parched, parched when she was saying, and the alarm bells went off. They were talking about Jackson Whitmore, who was missing in the morning after Sky had blackout. He felt queasy. Wait, Lydia was at his house, but he wasn't. Scott asked, yeah, his parents are out of town, Allison said, and she had the strangest look on her face. He didn't know how to read it. Was she embarrassed, shy, something else? Whoa, it is something else, he thought, grinning at her. She dimpled. She wished it could have been mom in the house with no parents, and the bell rang. I have to scoot, she said, and gave him another kiss. Then Lydia passed by, looking exhausted and worried, and Scott swallowed back his dread. I didn't kill anyone last night, he told himself. I know if I had, but would he? <clears throat> Sorry, guys, but I don't have enough time to read chapter two. I will get it to you by later today. And so that was chapter one. A lot of stuff happened. He bla uh, Scott blacked out. And now Justin's missing. So I guess we're going to find out next chapter if um Scott had anything to do with it. So like my video and subscribe to my channel. Bye.